and welcome to the ladies' room. Today, is, it is my pleasure to have with me Estelle Arlode, the mermaid chef. She is an experienced mm -hmm. diver and uh, underwater model, but more importantly, has written a book called The Mermaid Chef, which is very beautiful, gorgeous pictures of underwater scenes and uh, mm -hmm. wonderful philosophy and delicious recipes. So. Welcome, Estelle. Nice to have you here. Thank you, Judy. So I want to know your whole story. You're so interesting to me. Where were you born? Well, I was born in Lyon, in France. And uh, actually, we moved very fast to Saint-Tropez on the French Riviera. Fun. So I grew up there from the age of 3 to 13. And then we moved to St. Martin in the Caribbean. So that was uh, wonderful to grow up there, you know, at the time that it was like a little paradise with few people on it. Yeah. It's really lovely. On the French side? Were you on the French yeah. side? Yes. That's pretty on the French side. side. Grand Cas or? Grand Cas, Marigold. Colombier. Colombier, yeah. yeah. It's beautiful, yeah, Colombier. With the peak paradise on top. Yeah. <laughs> so um, how come you were moving around so much? Well, um, I've been looking like for adventures, but mostly I've been really in love with the beauty of our planet. Mm. And I really um, <coughs> love to see, you know, seas, deserts, um, tropical forests, all of this, and see different cultures all over the world. Yeah. And also when I was five, I learned about, for the first time about reincarnation. In my about little head, what? reincarnation. Oh, reincarnation. So, so I, you've been on a spiritual journey <laughs> since you're five. Yes. Whoa. So, so I, and I mean, I was growing up in Saint Tropez, where all was about fashion and all of this. And oh, yeah. in my little head, I was like thinking, well, you know what? I think this is going to be my last life because my house is in the sky. And so I need to uh, pass through like almost all the situations of life to achieve some type of enlightenment so that I don't need to come back. So this is kind of, I guess, the reason why I've been traveling and doing many different things. So you, uh, you've you been diving in Indonesia and uh, th Thailand, the Maldives. Maldives. And, and did you find like spiritual people and, and uh, well, teachers in actually, those places? Actually, I was not looking for teachers. I was more in a contemplative. Mm -hmm. Just absorbing the beauty of the planet. Exactly. The beauty of the planet, whatever somebody would say at any time, would like feed my own spiritual path, I guess. And when you would go down diving, were you like in a meditative state? Did you look? How, 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 what did that feel oh, like? Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like, it must be heavenly like, being like flying. You know, like yeah. If I could, I wouldn't have been a cosmonaut also to go into <laughs> space. So, you know, I did with the diving. And it's like, yeah, you feel bodiless in like, uh, you know, uh, the divine ocean of love, I call it. Ah, <laughs> yeah, you are a very loving person. That's what exudes from you all the time. Mm -hmm. So, besides cooking these wonderful things mm -hmm. and all kinds of things, what are your other passions? Um, well, I guess we mentioned them mostly. It's been always cooking mm -hmm. since also at five years old, I started with two pans, making crepes for my family, picking up wild lettuces, making a salad. Um, that is so cute. So I've been and really this into... in St. Martin. Well, first it was in Saint-Tropez. Then in St. Yeah. Martin, my mother, she had a few restaurants in a row. Oh, what were your so, mother's restaurants? Well, she, she had, uh, for years, she had a place called Le Bistro Marseillais, which was actually the first, like, French brasserie on, on, in Marigot, uh -huh. on the French island, uh -huh. the first place where you could watch a movie from a tape we would put in the afternoon. Oh. At that place, there was, you know, at that time, there was hardly any telephones, hardly any TVs. Right. So that was, and I was actually replacing the the chef that was making the pizzas on Tuesday night. And how was old his, were you? I was 14, and it was a wood oven oh things, but goodness. I loved it, you yeah. know. And I was not even doing it for money. I didn't even get paid, actually. <laughs> you know, just so I just do. liked it. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't that much to do on the uh -huh. island at that time. Uh -huh. But did you get into diving? when you were young then there? Uh, in St. Martin, I started to uh, go with the professional spear fishermen. Wow. So we were going for like How did you feel about killing the fish, though? Well, I'm very bad at aiming. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you didn't kill any. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, as long as we don't... Uh, as long as you eat what you kill. Exactly, and yeah. all of it, not just the yeah. filet. And, uh, and that we know that the species are not endangered. Yes. And you know, that they are not babies when we mm -hmm. catch them. I think it is quite okay. Mm -hmm. So you were started cooking when you were five, but where did you learn to make all these amazing things that you make now? Well, I learned from uh, housewives, grandmothers that learned from their grandmothers. So like most of my food, the base of my food is like traditional recipes from different country where I lived, like um, from the Caribbean, then I moved to Thailand for four years, so I oh. learned their tra traditional food from you know, women, grandmothers. Then I went to India for three years, so there I learned also from women. And to Australia for a year. Well, there I didn't really learn. I mean, I learned from the Aborigine, you just catch one animal and put it on the fire without <laughs> nothing <laughs> else. That's the way. So I didn't learn much there. You learned say. simplicity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, after this, we moved to Israel for eight years. Uh, by then, I had uh, my daughter. And How old uh, is your daughter now? Now she's 14, soon to okay. be 15. And um, so in Israel, I learned not only about kosher food, but I learned about Moroccan food. So all oh, the great that dinner I had at your house, the Moroccan food. Oh my God, it was like ambrosia. I didn't want to brush my teeth that night because I didn't want to lose the flavors. <laughs> Thank you. That is a compliment. Eat, I didn't even want to eat the desserts, but the desserts were so good. I think I actually had more of the the. I think it was a lamb dish or something. I had more oh, of that the, the after the dessert because I wanted the flavor back. Oh, it's just so aromatic, all the food. Yeah, with a lot yum, of yum, spices yeah. and dry fruits yeah. and the lamb. Yum. yum. So mm. what are your philosophies of life and food? It's obviously all tied up together for you, the spirituality, the philosophy, the food. Right. It's like mostly nature. like very sim simplicity is like something that I always look for. Simplicity and, and uh, love, you know. Love. Just love what you do and put the love in what you do and spread the love and receive the love and give more love. You know, simple. <laughs> love is all we need. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you making today? Well, I am making uh, some little skewers. So we are having um, some little very simple caprese um, skewers with fresh mozzarella and a little cherry tomatoes and basil that are marinated overnight. Now, what do you marinate in it? You marinate, you marinate the skewer whole or? The mozzarella. Oh, I the yes, I okay. marinate the mozzarella um, with uh, simply with olive oil little salt, uh, some chopped basil, and a little bit of garlic, not too much, because uh -huh. you know people don't want to have a bad breast. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of an old uh, wives tale, right? <laughs> right, and then we have some uh, seafood skewers, and also vegetable skewers. Uh, there are actually now, some are grilling right here. Is that the vegetable skewers are grilling? So we don't need to actually put, in the winter, if we don't go outside to our grill, we can actually do this on an indoor grill, and they come out pretty much the same. They look exactly. Beautiful. You can also put this in the middle of your table, any grill, and oh, like people cook their own that's little skewers. That's a cool idea, like the old hibachi thing. So here they are. And, and then, so what is on the vegetable skewers? So actually it is the same marinades that I have used for both. That's why I'm making both of them. Uh -huh. And it is this um, sweet and chili uh, sauce that we buy ready from uh, the Asian store. Indian? It's Asian, 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 Asian. It comes from Thailand most of the time, this sauce. So it is like a red sauce that is sweet and uh, with a chili inside. And this I mixed with a little olive oil, with the chive, garlic, and basil, mm -hmm. and uh, some lime. And then you, I take half of it that I marinate all the skewers with it, uh -huh. and I keep another half of it that will be like for people dipping. to dip after eating. And so this is for the little cooking demonstration of today, but what I want to demonstrate is how to decorate the passeron trays when you have your party. 
because this book is all about party food. So you have the way to decorate your passeron trays, very easy, simple, and different, and cheap also. And you have also, uh, in the book, you have it's about good. robots. The book is so pretty. Yeah. There's, there's Estelle, what? diving, the mermaid chef. So you, you wanna, I don't know, you might want to open it up to the page where what you're doing today. It's a beautiful book, and you have philosophical sayings throughout and beautiful drawings and photos. So here is the Caprices Cures. Oh, right there, right? Yeah. yeah. So here you have one way of decorating the passeron tray like we're going to do, do today. Do you have a, like a couscous or a bulgur under that? This one is actually the five peppers mix that we buy. You know, it's black pepper, white pepper, oh, pepper. red oh, pepper. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Oh, so the whole corns. Yes, whole oh, corns. Cool. Uh, today I brought some uh, different rice so that we will uh, put instead of the corns, uh -huh. the peppercorns. And uh, it's an heirloom tomato in the center where you poke all your skewers. Oh, that's a good idea. And so for each recipe you have from one to three different ways of decorating. You will see here it's another way with shells and we poke it on a half cucumbers. Yeah. So cool. that is what we will beautiful. see. Very beautiful, very beautiful book. How to give the party of your dreams. And you are from Saint-Tropez to the Hamptons. Well, it's nice to have you here in the Hamptons. Thank you, it's very so, nice to be here, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're going to decorate a tray? Yes, so I'm gonna put okay. now some more skewers to grill while we're gonna decorate uh, the tomato caprice skewers. And those are big scallops? These are scallops, yes. So somebody could just get a George Foreman grill and do that. Exactly. This, Amazing, I would never have thought of that. This is swordfish. Yeah, like in the book, like uh, it's really, you can make the parties anywhere you want. Mm -hmm. If you want to go on the beach, if you want to go, uh, you know, anywhere. We used to do that all the time on the beach on a little hibachi. I would make the skewers at home. And I would uh, actually par cook the vegetables a little bit. So what vegetables do you have? Uh, like an orange pepper, red onion, tomato, zucchini? Zucchini, zucchini. mushroom. mushroom. Yeah. Oh, I know. Then here are the shrimps. Okay. Oh, stuck to the top. So you were the executive chef at the bridge, and you would still mm. be, except that uh, you that's had a little medical four. setback briefly, but uh, right. And four years, you know, it's 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 a long time for me. I like for to four move. Years. Yeah, I like to move around. I was the former executive chef there, and it's been uh, it's been great. I heard wonderful things about you. I hear the restaurant there is really great. And you're the one that you, you were the first chef yes, there yeah. for the opening. Right. The bridge, in case you don't know, is this. Uh, great uh, golf course that's mm -hmm. where the old um, race car track was on Millstone Road, is it? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be really spectacular. Yes, it's one yeah. of the top high-end uh, golf club in the world, actually. How did you wind up there? Did, did you well, actually, I was uh, working as a private chef in Saint-Tropez mm -hmm. every summer for like eight summers in a row. And I would see like many people would be like, recognized and taken to the USA to work. And I was like, why not me? They all sound <laughs> like so great. Why is it? And then finally, and on then the eighth to you. year, yes. You were discovered. I was working for three and a half months in the summer for a couple of uh, people from here. Uh -huh. And so they had many guests from here. And uh -huh. one of them is a member of the bridge. So when he heard that the owner was looking for a different type of chef, uh -huh to open the new clubhouse, talked about me. They flew me in, tried my food, and decided to hire me. Yeah. So did you have fun there for four years? There's a lot of yes. work, right? Yes, yes, yes. Very does. intense in the summer. But then you have the winters off? Yes, all the winters off, you know, five months off uh, a year. So that was great. The two first year we was going to Florida. 
And then uh, my daughter really loved the school in Southampton, so I decided, okay, we're gonna stay the whole year here. And, okay. and she was right because we had a lot of fun. We met you. We met many, many, many nice God, people. God, it was a blizzard the night we came to your oh, house. Yes. A blizzard. Oh right. my gosh! In the middle yeah. of the night, you showed up. I couldn't believe it. I was like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's amazing we found your house. So. Um, what, so did you have a signature dish at uh, the bridge? Well, actually, you know, I never had a signature dish. And well, one, you're so versatile. You make one so of, many different things. One of my uh, clients, she really uh, reconfronted me because, you know, I was telling her, are you happy when I was working in, in uh, private? Yeah. You think I'm doing enough? You think I'm good enough? You know, I was not very sure of myself. And she was like, don't worry, you know, every professional chef we hired, they have like five great meals and that's it. That's after what I've heard, each chef has the five, five And things. then after, we, we don't know what to eat anymore. Yeah. And she says, you, every day, it's like, mm. and you know, it's nothing special. It's just like going to the market, seeing whatever yeah. is fresh that day and, you know, and, and cooking you it in a you know with how happiness. to do all those different flavorings, like Thai food and Moroccan right. food and French so, food. And and also, you know, I don't have much uh, ego. I, I cook with love, not with ego. So I'm not like trying to sign my dishes. Yeah. You know, I give my recipe very easily, you know. So mm -hmm. you have a, how many recipes are in this book? A lot. Not so many. No, no, no it's only about like 47 recipes. Ooh, that's a lot to me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe it's like uh, 12 sauces included, uh -huh. and which is very important because, you know, I keep, uh, I still keep my French base of food, which is we want to give like a whole, the whole taste of everything. And the sauce is really like complimentary mm -hmm. and, you know, doing the whole thing. So it's like at least 12 sauces in there and at least 35 38 different recipes for pass around and raw bars mm -hmm. so like this you don't need to break your head what i'm going to do what i have to yeah. choose from you know it's so it's basically a party planning book yes that's very cool for out here very cool and is it in the bookstores or we can get it on it's amazon oh yes amazon okay. Barnes and noble uh, Hampton yeah. Bookstore, Yay. and I just signed with an international agent, so hopefully it's going to be good. everywhere. And you're going to write more books, right? Yes, the next one should be The Mermaid Chef for Kids. All right. And um, well, five, five year olds. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and then I would like to write about whatever I have seen in life, you know, mm -hmm. at the adventures I, I had all over the world. And I would like also a book about, to write a book about spirituality. Mm -hmm. And um, then we'll see. Yeah, you know, it's when you bless your food, it raises the vibration of the food. It turns it into prasad, Absolutely. blessed food. So um, it is always wonderful to have an attitude of gratitude and to give thanks for the blessings Mother Nature has given us because our planet is so Beautiful and prolific. I mean, it just astounds me. Ah, every summer, that they must sell a million lobsters at Gossman's Dock. You know, you go out to Montauk and like every restaurant serving like thousands of lobsters. That there's always more lobsters. That there's always the abundance on the planet. I don't know, it's just mind-boggling, isn't the, it? Yeah, the lobster is something very special because there is a walk of the lobster that goes like deep it's like millions of lobster walk every year in certain directions really? and like people like all divers whatever fishermen they go there and just, just grab by dozens hundreds millions, really thousands just, and they're underwater I, when they're walking yeah yeah they walk i don't know exactly what's their way mm. but they have a walk of the lobsters and they're like millions of millions of them that is amazing. Nature is just mind-boggling, isn't it? Yeah. One summer we were at Georgica Pond, and all of a sudden, all of the crabs started coming up out of the pond, and that's what they did. Hundreds and hundreds, probably over a thousand, like, I mean, probably a couple thousand. And they marched, they came up out of the pond, and they marched along the base of the dune, and then they went out to the ocean, and everybody was running to get their cameras We've never seen it again. I've been out here 45 years. That was that one time. Oh, wow. It was all the blue, and they were all like, 
Okay. There's, a, there's a book called The Beautiful Swimmer, and I hear, I've never read it, but I hear it's a beautiful book, and it's about the blue claw crab. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? And so, yeah? Have you, uh, in Australia, there were some people raising, uh, like, shrimps, and not exactly shrimps, some type of shrimps. And they would say, like, from one day to the next, their pond would be, their little uh, swimming pool would be empty, and then they could see the trays. They would walk to another pond that they prefer oh. overnight. Imagine <laughs> a shrimp with a personality. Get your child a pet shrimp today. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so what else are we making now? Oh, you were going to so, decorate a tray. Let's decorate the tray. It trays. already looks so beautiful the way you did the corn. I think you should hold up that corn. Should the, yes, that's called the, the, the wonderful looking corn. The crazy corn. Crazy. Decoration, I call it. Uh -huh. And actually, you know, I use it just for the decoration today, uh -huh. but if you would serve it individual, you could grill it and then decorate it and to give to one person. Uh -huh. But here we serve it like a pass around tray where people will just grab their thing. And let me show you. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's very easy. Simplicity, always oh, pay. Oh, look at that. You put the skewers into the corn. That's brilliant. Oh. Then you have to balance it. Balance. Kind of. Everything's a balancing act. So then if somebody starts to grab the wrong one and they're going to throw the balance off, you have to slap them on the hand. <laughs> Life can be tricky. <laughs> <laughs> so tricky. Th the scallop. Uh, very the, beautiful. Another shrimp. So scallops and what kind of fish is this? This is saltfish. Oh, swordfish. Oh, I love swordfish. Huh. So what are you going to do next now, Estelle? What well, are you going to do for this summer? Uh, this summer I'm actually open for private parties in, uh, in August. And I'll be doing, I think, a few book signings also in, oh, in that's August. Good. You have a book signing come up, coming up in, in April? Uh, Han Huntington at the book review, uh, April 14th, uh -huh. uh, quarter to seven. Anyone is welcome. We're going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to make a sangria and we'll talk i won't talk too much is we'll that... drink and eat and have fun <laughs> and is it a it's a bookstore is it in the miracle mile or what is the it, walt whitman shopping center or something like that it's, i don't uh, really know that area well it, it's actually a place where uh, i've been told uh, many famous authors do their book signings so i'm pretty like happy to be Good there mm -hmm. huh. yeah that's exciting and uh, any plans to go diving in the near future? It's still winter well, here. Well, actually, my so. birthday is coming next week, and my boyfriend is taking me to Puerto Rico, and we're going to okay. go diving to uh, Vieques. Vieques, yeah. Yes, Island. Yeah. I hear Vieques is really looking beautiful now, now that they've closed the military base and everything. There's yeah. a lot of charming houses oh. popping up, and the beaches are great. And the beaches are empty. You can drive along. And there'll be little um, pathways down to the beach, and there's an only space for two or three cars. And if you see two cars parked, then you just go to the next one or the next one. Mm -hmm. And you have a whole beach to yourself or just one or two other people on the beach, which is kind of cool, especially if, you know, you've got a great boyfriend mm -hmm. and you're feeling romantic. Not that, you know, yes. not that you're going to roll around in the sand, but it's always nice to have a beach to yourself. Voila. And I'm yeah. always, you know, very, uh, it's very exciting for me to know that in a year I'll be doing something totally different that I have no idea what it will be right now. It lies could be right scary sometimes, but it is very exciting. And, you know, this yeah. is where you can, you know, let go of all fear and trust the universe that, you know, you will be in a good place because... Yeah. Life has changed. People that yeah. get stuck mm -hmm. block up their lives because really all there, all there is is change. Exactly. Very atom and molecules change in every minute, so right. I mean, what are you going to do? So now you are going to put, oh, that's great, those peppers. Oh, that's beautiful. Voila. So, so that's here, very fun. <laughs> I have made, I have cut a slice at the bottom of the corn so it won't fall so down. It's flat. I guess I could have cut it a bit more because mm -hmm. it's a little bit rolling it, right now. Now, you, is it, are you cutting actually the cob or just the kernels off the bottom? The kernels off the, the bottom. Because the cob is hard, right? Right, yeah. yeah. So this Very is one. Beautiful. So remember to cut it 
fully, not like I yeah. just didn't know because it's not stable That's right great. now. Now we're going to do another decoration. Okay. So this is my little bag of mixed raw rice. So I, eat, I use a lot of dry uh, beans. And raw rice. And this is just raw rice. So it's like... It looks like a pebbly beach. <laughs> yeah, I do have one decoration where I use uh, or couscous or corn meal, uh -huh. and I make like it's the beach. Oh, cool. And you know, you do like this with your wrist, and then like this with your fingers, and it's like little steps, feet oh. steps in the sand. It cool. It's pretty funny. So here also, you cut like the bottom of the tomato. I'm going to cut it a bit more so we don't have the same problem as we just had. And that's for voilà. people to stick their used uh, toothpicks in. Voila, so uh -huh. for the caprice. Well, it's not really the season of the heirloom tomato, so mine is oh. a bit small today. <laughs> you know, time has flown, and uh, we're probably going to start hearing music soon, which indicates right. that uh, we get to eat the food. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming, Estelle. It's just look at how beautiful that looks. That's amazing. You see, this is very You're simple. An amazing girl. Very simple, but it looks nice, and people feel like eating it. Yeah. It gorgeous. didn't take time. It yeah. didn't take much money, but it's so much so, better. Thank you, ladies, for joining us in the ladies' room. Remember, ladies, give yourself lots of room. Room for love. Especially love, right, Estelle? Especially room love. For love. Lots of room for love. Room for fun, room to grow, and room to glow. And Thank you for coming. Thank yeah. you. Shadows